Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, another uh, paper three, practical skills, and in this we're going to discuss the question number two, which is a question on the slide which Cambridge will send, and uh, so this is for the upcoming exam next week. Now, please remember that uh, the slide, which is in this case is M1, is a slide of a stain transverse section through a plant stem. Draw a large plan drawing of the diagram of the region of the stem on M1 indicated by the shaded area in figure 2.1. Use a sharp pencil. Your drawing should include three vascular bundles. Now, please remember, you must look at the slide very carefully. If you are unable to focus it, well, you can ask somebody to do it for you. You can just say the microscope is not working and they will help you with it. So you look at the slide. Now, I'm going to give you three different slides. Uh, I'm not sure what was the Cambridge slide, but my guess is that it was something like this. You see, it could be this slide. This is the stem and you had to draw three. So you'd have to draw something like this area. It could have been this one. Yes, so you could have drawn this area. And the last bet of mine was it could have been this one. Because, you know, I have sort of thought about looking at the uh, looking at the mark scheme for the later question. I have sort of I have a guess that this could be the uh, these could be the different slides. So now in a plan drawing, you know, you don't draw any cells. You just draw a plan of the tissues. Now I'm going to give you a plan drawing of each of these. Now, if you look at it, this is the one that I've drawn for this slide. Now, what is a plan drawing? A plan drawing is a plan of the tissues. So you can see here that we have the upper epidermis. So these are the two lines which I've drawn. Maybe you can't see it that very clearly. But of course, you'll be able to see it in the slide. And then these are the vascular bundles which I've drawn. This is one. Then you can see there is an area in which it is dividing because of the cambium in it. And then this is the vascular bundle. So this is a plan drawing in which we draw a plan drawing of the plan of the tissues. So the vascular bundles are all at the periphery and this is what is telling us that this must be a stem. Now I want you to look at this one as well in which I have done a plan drawing of this. So you see, I've not drawn any cells. There's nothing here. You don't draw these cells. You don't draw anything of this. You just draw a plan of the tissues, which is of course the outer epidermis with the double line showing that. And then you're showing the three vascular bundles, which has been, has been asked in the paper. So three vascular bundles, and that is what you were supposed to do. And uh, you were supposed to label the xylem as well. You know the xylem is inside in the stem and the phloem is on the outside. So you must know that, that uh, you know, where are we drawing? What are we drawing? So another one of this, which I have just shown you uh, and, uh, you know, three vascular bundles and uh, a quarter, a very, very uh, triangular portion of it, which was mentioned in the uh, question. So when you look at this question again, we have now gone through this question, but the most important thing is use one rule, label line and label to identify the xylem. So you would use this space. Now this space is where you have to use it the maximum. So you see, this is the five marks here that comes here, and this is the space. So you must do something which is as big as this area. And then you draw the vascular bundles as you see them. And then you, show me the cambium. There should be no shading. There should be no individual cells. And then you label the xylem. Usually students get five out of five in this because there is no reason why you should get any marks. Any marks should be cut unless you're doing something. Of course, I've seen sometimes students drawing each individual cells, but then that means they've never even attended the practical class or they have never even understood what is a plan drawing. So five marks and what are the five marks for it's very clear in the syllabus the five marks is size number one the size should fill up all the space then draws the correct section of the stem and no cells drawn draws three whole vascular bundles draws vascular bundles with three layers so you have to discern this 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 and uh, 
label 9 and label to xylem so these were the five marks there's no other mark scheme point there's the five marks for it that's it then part two of the question that's another five mark question observe the central tissue on the section of the stem on m1 select a group of four adjacent cells which show observable features of the central tissue each cell must touch at least two other cells make a large drawing of this group of four cells use one rule label line and label to identify the cell wall of one cell and this is again now for five marks so you've got to draw now the important thing is this is the thing which you've got to remember you only have to draw four cells nothing more than that so only four cells to be drawn now if you look at this diagram now this diagram now they want you to do four cells from the center of it now i'm just magnifying it a bit i know you can't do this in the exam but i mean look at it what have we to draw now we have to draw four cells so this is one two three and four so you have to draw four cells you could do any i'm not saying you can only do this one you could have drawn this one as well and please remember as i am you know sort of zooming it is not very exact but you will be able to see it on high power magnification so four cells from anywhere in the central of it the central area of the stem or if you look at this one now this is a little more clearer i find this a little better than the previous one so you can see one then you see they are not all the same size two three and four so each cell is touching two other cells and that is the important thing that you have to do is that each cell must touch two other cells now the diagram should start like this but then it says minimum size lines continuous thin and sharp and no shading so you probably get a mark for that draws only four whole cells draws only four whole cells and each cell touches at least two other cells so this one is touching this one and this one this one is touching this one and this one this one now if i look at this one is touching this one and this one so every one is touching two other cells some of you might find it difficult to really understand that now this is not complete why because they, these are plant cells this is a stem so you would have to show me double lines to show the cell wall so if you look at here there would be a double line and a very very close double line not very far of here some of you make very 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 far away double lines i check papers and i see this very often so a double line showing you these showing you the cell wall now the important thing which it says in the mark schemes time and time again is that you show a double wall like this but where there is another cell meeting it then you show three lines so here there is 1 2 3 so wherever there are the cells touch each other then you must show three lines so and the mark scheme is very clear the five marks that you are supposed to get it says minimum size and all lines continuous thin and sharp no shading draws only four whole cells and each cell touches at least two other cells the third mark is two lines around each cell and three lines where cells touch and correct shape of the cells and label line and label to one cell wall so a very easy five marks which i'm i'm 100% that everybody should get these five marks these are the easiest five marks that you have in the whole exam then coming to the b part of the question figure 2.2 is a photo micrograph of a stain transfer section of a different stem now look at it very carefully this would of course come to you as a colored uh, picture so it's a square stem and 
it's got trichomes on the outside. You can see these trichomes. And it's got a central hollow area. Look at it very carefully. Now it says identify three observable differences between the stem in figure 2.2 and the stem on M1. Record the three observable differences. Observable difference means something which you can observe. You can't say is cylindrical. You can't observe it cylindrical. So what can you observe? Now the first and the most important thing. Now the thing is if they do give you this table, then that's fine. But if they don't give you this table, you need to do a table every time. Three columns, feature, figure whatever, and slide whatever number is given in the paper. It won't, it's not going to be always figure 2.2 and M1. Slide could be something else. Cambridge might give you some other figure for that. So it says the feature and then the observable difference. Now the first and the most, uh, okay, we'll go back and I'll bring that other slide here and just uh, keep it next to it so that you can have a look at it. Now I've just added this slide and I'm thinking that this was the slide from Cambridge. I'm not sure, I'm just saying I think this was the slide. Now, what are the things which they see features? Number one, if you look at the features, vascular bundles. Now the vascular bundles here, you can see they're joined. Here yeah, they're separate. So the first point is vascular bundles joined and separate. Then the shape of the stem here, it is square. Here it is jagged. Then trichomes present, not present here. Then central region is hollow. Central region is filled with cells. Now, of course, you will not see the slide in the paper. You will look at the microscope. You will look at that slide, make a mental note of it, and then look at this picture, which is given to you in figure 2.2, and then come up with the points. And it says three observable differences. Didn't say compare. If it says compare, then it's similarities and differences, but it said only differences. So if the columns are not given to you in the coming exam, then you draw the columns. Uh, that always gets you another mark. And then, of course, you identify the feature that you're going to compare. You can say vascular bundles. You can say shape of the stem. You can say trichomes. You can say central region. You can say anything. You can say the outer margin if it's uh, smooth. And if it is not smooth, you can come up with anything else which might be present on the slide and then on the diagram which is given to you. So these are the important thing is that this child does not read observable differences. And you are, you've got to look at the slide and then you've again got to look at this picture and then decide what are the observable differences. Then coming to the last part of the paper and the question, figure 2.3 is the same photomicrograph as that shown in figure 2.2. The line XY is drawn across the width of the stem. Now it says use the line x, y and the scale bar. This is the scale bar. Please remember this is the scale bar to calculate the actual width of the stem. Show your working and use appropriate units. This is very sad if somebody loses marks on this because you've never ever bothered to really understand it. And so actual width of the stem. Now first of all is you have to measure this scale bar. This is what you have to measure. Forget anything else. And then, of course, you have to measure this from x to y. First and the most important thing is that you measure this scale bar. This is now 1.7 centimeter. Yeah, 1.7 centimeter is equal to 17 millimeter. So you divide it, then you say 17,000 micrometer because one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeter is equal to 10 millimeter and one millimeter is equal to 1000 micrometer. If you don't know this well, I don't know what I should do to you. So 17,000 micrometer and then you divide it by 253.5 because this scale bar, whatever the length is, is actually equal to 253.5 micrometers. So when you divide this, you will get the magnification. And then, of course, you have this, which I have measured is 8.5 centimeter. So this is 85 
millimeter. But then you see what do you want the answer if they haven't actual width of the stem you can give it in millimeter or in micrometer but millimeter and micrometer both should be given. So first of all you need to calculate so you need to give me all this working which is 17,000 divided by 253.5. Now this is equal to this will give us the magnification. So the first thing that you did was you calculated the magnification. So 17,000 divided by 253.5 gives you 67. This is the magnification is 67 times. Now you calculate the actual length that is 88.5 centimeter. This is equal to 85 millimeters. So 85 divided by 67. This will give you the actual length of the stem, which is 1.3 millimeter. It depends if you want to talk in centimeter, but you can do it in centimeter or you can do it in millimeter because the four marks that were given to you for this was correct measurement of scale bar in X, Y and units. Then it shows the length of the scale bar divided by 253.5. Then it shows the length of X, Y divided by the answer to this part, this part and correct answer in units. So these were very easy four marks and everybody should be able to get it. The basically the point that you all are not clear is about the scale bar. The scale bar has to be measured and that is going to get you the magnification. And then you can calculate the actual width of the stem because this is a diagram which has been magnified 67 times. So actually it is 8.5 centimeter. So it's 85 millimeter. And if it's 67 times magnified, so the actual length would be 1.3 millimeter. This was a total 18 marks and very easy to get and usually when I check mark papers many many students get full 18 out of 18 in this uh, question 2 which doesn't really require a lot of knowledge of any other biology except the fact that you are able to uh, look at the slide and make all the observable differences and calculate the magnification. So please be very careful in doing this part of the uh, paper and see that you are able to get as many more marks as possible. In fact, you should be getting full marks. So all the best and thank you very much. And I'll be doing another question too, which has been uh, written in the comments. I'll try to do a few more papers before your final exams on the 23rd.